Hey everybody, Jackalus Painting here with a brand new video. And it's an exciting day. This is the first painting video, real painting video of 2021. You've seen this guy before. This is the brand new Fly Lord, the Plague Demon Prince from Pop Goes the Monkey in their monkey resin. Amazing 3D printed model. Gotta give a shout out to my boy Carnage King for designing this model. Comes with all of the weapon options you might need and it is very easy to magnetize. Trust me, if I can do it, you can do it. Super simple. Probably seen this guy before. We painted him with a primer and pre-shade in our last video where we did a review of the brand new Pro Acryl primers. Those are super good, really like using them. And we're gonna break this video into two parts. Um, I just wanna say that up front because one of the things I wanna talk about during this video is how you can't do everything with an airbrush, and we'll, we'll get into that. But first, I'm going to set up an undercoat with this burnt sienna. I have come up with this really nice little uh, recipe. I know I've said in the past I'm not a recipe painter, but what I mean by that is a way of painting my Death Guard collection in a way that is easy to replicate. I don't always do exactly the same thing. I don't have a specific number of... Uh, drops of paint that I mix with another specific number of drops of paint to replicate that every time. A lot of it is kind of flying by the seat of my pants, but I'm using a lot of the same colors so that as a collection it all looks cohesive. And one of the things I like to do with these guys to create that kind of Nurgle rusty weathering right out the gate is I do this rusty orange undercoat and kind of like using uh, a darker primer as a shadow, we're using this rusty undercoat as um, well, rusty undercoat. Uh, it's just setting up our weathering. So that way on the bottom of everything, kind of in the deep recesses, we have that nurgly rust build up already started for when we want to do things like paint chipping and adding more rust and doing all sorts of other things. So now that that undercoat is done, I'm going to get into starting with our Death Guard green armor. I've got some dark camo green and our soylent green. I've mixed those together in roughly equal parts because one thing that I've noticed is that it's really easy to take this sort of desaturated green color and overdo it. You don't want to really, you don't want to suck all the color out of this green. We want to make sure there is some vibrant color in there somewhere. So when I worked on our custom Mortarion, what I ended up having to do was go back and glaze this Soylent Green into some of those shadows to give it some saturation. Whereas this time around, I'm just adding that up front. And then after that, we're gonna do a highlight. We're gonna start doing our highlight with just regular camo green. And for this model, I'm using a fairly basic highlighting strategy. I'm not doing a by the book top down highlight. It's more of just a high angled highlight. It's fairly easy to do. Nothing super special about that. No uh, laser highlights or anything that's going to be super detailed. Uh, after that, I'm going to take some of our bright warm gray and I'm going to mix that into our camo green to get this in between color. And we're going to do even smaller highlights to start popping that green out and getting that desaturated look. And like I said earlier, I did want to talk a little bit about how I'm breaking this video into two pieces. The first one is going to be most of the airbrushing, all, all airbrushing, because that's how we start all of our projects. But unless you're painting something really big, right, like a, I don't know, like a one eighth scale statue or something, um, it's really hard to do every single little thing with an airbrush. You can't ever just go start to finish with only using the airbrush. It's really hard to do that. Uh, and you're not going to have a fully finished looking model, right? Um, so I'm just showing how in almost every project we're using the airbrush to do two things. One is to give our models a little bit of wow factor, right? Some some airbrush gradients and pop highlights so that when people see them, they say, oh wow, that's really cool, right? Wow factor. The other thing is expediency. It's time efficiency. We're doing this to speed up the painting process in a way because, you know, it, doing everything by only using a paintbrush, it just takes a really long time. And especially in our hobby, when you're working on more than just one model, your time is a very valuable resource. You want to spend it wisely. 
and here we're gonna start doing our kind of how do I how do I describe the fly fleshy bits? I'm I'm not really sure. Maybe like the the mutated parts, the carapace, something like that. And just blocking that in with some black brown, right? Super easy. This is a technique that I use on a ton of models, especially if I want to have uniform airbrush highlights on multiple parts of the models that I can't put into a sub assembly. So I'm going to block those in by hand and then very carefully airbrush highlights on top of it. You can see that I'm just using a gray because I want to have like a grayish brown fly body type look for this guy. And I'm using my thumb for kind of a mask so that I can keep that paint from spraying down onto parts of the armor. So that way I can get like his face and those little mandibles without getting any overspray. And then I want to take that brown and I want to brighten it up a little bit. I want to warm it up a little bit. So I'm mixing in some light umber and then just a couple of drops of that same warm gray to get a nice in between grayish brown that's going to be a good highlight color. And uh, I didn't film this part because there's multiple sub assemblies, but I'm doing this for the whole model. That's, that's how I generally do these steps, but you don't have to see me do the head and the feet and the arms and the talons and all that, right? Um, so anything that I'm doing that fly body type stuff too, I'm doing it during these steps, but I'm only filming the main body. And then the last thing I'm doing is taking that bright warm gray again and anywhere where he's got like spikes or claws or talons or like this horn on his head right here, I'm going to get just the end tip of that and give it a little pop. So we have that kind of cool transition from uh, what you might consider like a softer flesh into a harder bonier carapace type flesh for the claws and talons. And now I want to work on the wings. He's got these really awesome fly wings and I'm just going to base those out with some golden brown because I want kind of a sickly yellow for these as just a nice contrasting color to the greens that we already have. And I've shown quite a bit of me painting this part just because I want to talk real quick about brush pressure. When you're working with uh, really any paint, but specifically these lighter pigmented paints like bone colors, yellows, off-whites, uh, flesh tones especially, brush pressure is really important because to get nice thin even coats and to get that thin coat of paint to cover nicely, you need to have a very soft touch with the brush because if you push harder down on the brush, you're actually not laying down a thin sheet of paint. You're just dragging it across the model. And the paintbrush itself almost acts kind of like a, like a snow plow where it's pushing the paint out to both sides rather than laying down one thin sheet. And so I've adjusted my grip on the paintbrush. I find it easier to kind of choke back on the paintbrush handle with my hand so that I can just barely touch the model with the tip of my brush. And that way, in just, you know, this was like two and a half coats, I think, over five minutes, didn't take very long, just to get a nice opaque coat of this light golden brown, which is, in my opinion, kind of a hard color to paint with because it's a yellow color, lightly pigmented, it's not gonna cover all that great. And then from there, again, I'm going to go back and I'm gonna give it an airbrush highlight. I've got the pale yellow here. And we're gonna go about halfway down the wing so that way I have some of that golden brown still showing and I can avoid any overspray on the stuff that we've already painted and I'm just going to give a light airbrush highlight with that pale yellow to not so much desaturate the color but to um, kind of pastel it out to get that like sickly yellow color and then we have one more step after this. Once that paint is really good and dry, I'm gonna come back with some transparent red. I wanna make sure that it is really nice and dry because I don't want this transparent color, which is uh, a very thin paint with a lot of flow improver added for transparency. I don't want that to reactivate the paint. So I'm just gonna take that and do a little bit of spray on the tips of the wings. Um, I kinda of came up with this on the fly, no pun intended, just cause I thought it might look cool to have that nice like 
bright red tip on the wings. And the last thing we're going to airbrush is the sword. He's got this really gnarly sword that he's holding, and I want to do a really toxic poisonous green color, so I'm basing out the entire sword blade with the Soylent Green. After that's dry, I'm gonna grab some bright yellow green, you know, your, your scorpion green, there's a bunch of different names for it, same, same color basically, a nice bright toxic yellow green, and I'm gonna lightly airbrush around the perimeter of that blade and the point especially, and start building up that contrast between our more primary color green and this nice bright yellow green to create kind of that magical toxic sword effect, whatever you want to call it. After that, I'm gonna pop it even more with some golden yellow, very similar to like your, your flash gets yellow or sun yellow, thing like that. And um, this paint I have a little bit more transparent because I don't want to put less of it on there. I just wanna take that bright yellow green and kind of turn the saturation dial up a little bit, if that makes sense. Just wanna make it even brighter and get more of that super bright, almost like hurt your eyes yellow green and then we're going to finish it out with some pale yellow. This is going to help give us that kind of glow effect by going to an almost white. Um, this color, when you look at it, you're like, that's not white. That's like, you know, pale eggshell yellow. But when you apply it onto the model with our primary green and our yellow green and then the yellow and then this color, it looks almost white and it gives us a nice glow effect. And here he is for right now. We still have a ton of work to do to this guy. I feel like our next video is going to be a lot longer because I'm going to be doing pretty much all just like hand painting and the washes and the details and all that kind of stuff. But I just wanted to show how this is how I begin all of my projects. I start with an airbrush and then we have to finish with the paintbrush, which is why paintbrush skills are actually a little bit more fundamental to painting than airbrushing. But airbrushing gets us time efficiency and some cool wow factor. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you next time.